that was certainly interesting experiment. Don't know if it'll be done again, but that'll be something to talk about. Hello and welcome to my first ever reaction and thoughts on the first ever reaction on the first ever double feature Nintendo Rats, consisting of both an indie world and a partner showcase. So I'm starting with the indie sh indie world first. Normally I don't cover these that actively, but given the unique nature of this presentation, might as well go to short, so let's begin. First up, we have collaborations with the hit game Balatro, a unique blend of table of playing cards. And these collaborations include Hit Tusk to Witcher 3, Vampire Survivors, Day of the Diver, and Among Us. I have not played this game yet, but I've heard very good things about it, especially given how many hours other people have logged into it, so let's get started. Next up is Neva from the Makers of Gris. And let me tell you, I mean, a lot of these games stealth dropped, hopped, or oh, I don't have release dates yet, I mean... So... Unless otherwise noted, I will be mentioning that, so... And... Okay, so this game is coming out October 15th, and I believe the Bellatro collaborations are already live. So, let's continue. Mm. Next up is Moth Cubit. I see what he did there, which is a roguelite RPG slash office sim coming next spring and a play on on basketball coach and major time investor Mark Cuban. And I would certainly invest in this, this title. I mean, it's one I'll be keeping on my radar. I mean, in general, I don't play whole lot of indie titles. I mean, sure, if something looks interesting, you know, I'll give it a go. So, but given, just like the big market, you really have to stand out in order to really find an audience in today's market where everything is competing regardless of genre or target audience. Case some points. Coffee Talk Tokyo, a spin-off of the of the highly acclaimed Coffee Talk uh, visual novels, the first two chapters of which have been seen release, and even though one of the original creators has tragically passed away a, in recent years, I am glad that the developers on multiple parts of the world have gone to great lengths to honor their late colleague and friend, so... Oh, I definitely appreciate this expanding and also how even the not too distant future people will still be coming in just for a warm drink and even more sympathetic ear. And also kinda of like the whole idea of of like reality unless noted where it's not that different from our world in this game. But they show that there is Kitsune who want green tea, matcha, and a an retired Sally Man Kappa who wants a cup of coffee. He, I actually really like that idea. Yeah, and sometimes I'm, I think even though oh they have not been as big here as in other countries, they have managed to find their niche. Typically, they do something interesting with the story, characters, at least offer some kind of twist on the gameplay. Hey, so let's continue. Sea of Stars, Her's Throws of the Watchmaker expansion, and it's coming next spring. I definitely want to play more of this game. I mean, it was among my favorite ones of 2023. Hey, as if someone wanted to make a throwback to who, who classic role-playing games such as Chrono Trigger, one of my all-time favorite Super Nintendo games, by the way. So they made one, and when it goes along, it definitely can't be that price free. So let's continue. All right. So a new collaboration with the Break I Had Power Watch Simulator with the Shrek 
franchise, especially with the next movie coming out in a couple years. And the main thing I want out of it is to be good, main, good, and especially since they are indeed planning on getting some of the other cast creators back, but that's not important right now. What is, however, is that there's going to be at least five I have maps for you to power wash, a new knight suit of armor, and things should go well with other collaborations I've had with everything from Back to the Future to Final Fantasy VII to Tomb Raider to even SpongeBob SquarePants, and just uh, and that's just among the ones on top of my head. And so, you'd be surprised how entertaining in washing all the gunk off of a house is. Hmm. We've also got another roguelite kind of game aim coming next February in which you are a, a mouse who has to guide hey, them through a bunch of feral cats and other monstrosities and in order to do that you end up becoming transformed into something even more and the game was called More Souls so Certainly has potential, so I'll give it at that. With our obligatory, very more bizarre title, we have a switch port of the a dating simulator, a genre which I don't really play that much, date everything, including a new character. We can date the text prompt itself. And I would simply say, okay. It's coming out October 24th, so oh, I don't think it'll be particularly spooky unless you're looking through a certain lens. But as someone who's got that weekend book solo with both Sonic Cross Shadow Generations and the third Venom movie, I think I've met my quota there. Now we come um, to... Another game which I think has potential, but even has how unconventional it is, that being Paiklin, a pachinko-based ace role-playing title. Well, it's almost like a reverse version of Breakout or Bust a Move, where, where you do how it's handled. I mean, I'll definitely keep an eye on this one. It has potential, so let's continue. And December. We've got Wobbly Life, which is definitely a, a, an, a title that you might hate to see a something about, I mean, and I can definitely a, a understand the physics-based nature of this game, and let's hope that it ends up not being indecent, so... And Speaking of physics-based games, here's one called Pico Park 2. I did not play the first one, but this looks interesting, and with this, I give you the lightning round of the indie portion of the direct, so let's get to it. So, Shovel Knight, Eight of Hope, DX, forgive me for truncating that title, Europa, might be alright, Cuisineer, January 28th next year, Certainly looks like something. On your tail, November 21st. I'm just not sure what to make of it. So how it's coming out right before something in the main portion. Metal Slug Tactics this fall. Sorry for posting a club twice in a previous video. And the Plucky Squire on September 17th. So even though I'm not as actively excited for that one, and especially as I'm still looking forward to Zelda, I just get why other people are, so... The That's last good. one is the Sensational Pizza Tower coming to Switch. I might finally try this now that it's on the system. Um, a game that's heavily influenced by the Wario Land franchise, where a non-destructible well, protagonist is must run through and crash through a stage as quickly as possible. And as for this or Anton Blast, I would respond, why not both? Like that at Old El Paso hotspot back in the 2000s. And scan Q the Fiesta. And after a brief intermission, I will definitely. Hey, let's get on to the partner showcase, which proves that 
even with no new variant still, the OG switched all his models up from the tank heading in 2025. Okay, so we lead off to celebrate 14th anniversary of Tetris. As we have the Tetris Forever Interactive Museum Visual Eclipse. This was the area of Atari. Do we have to go make a job with that stuff there? Coming in 2024, the original games Nest Plus coming Nest Online this winter and also has a Tetris 99 event and also coming in the winter. So it definitely is going to be quite the, the experience. You know, when I was visiting my father in California early in the year, here, I actually played the arcade version of Tetris at the Museum of Kennedy in San Francisco. Actually pretty good. So, let's continue. Coming in 2025, it's first one launch on this console. A science fiction adventure title, Star Overdrive, where you're surfing across planets and getting into fights with all the strange creatures there. And it's definitely one I and I'm not certain about, but as enough in truth, I'll keep it keep it in my headspace, so let's continue. Okay, so Goat Simulator 3 in the fall, and much like the goats we have around here right now, the real troll makers that seem to defy the laws of physics more often than not, and that's also on top of like a full remaster of the original game coming as well. And yes, all the bugs and breaking of physics are still a selling point. Maybe it's just as it's it's part of my head never really got past that, that stage. But I've always found how ragdoll physics can be rather amusing. And so there's a lot of other games to get through. So let's press on. So, Legends... Of Heroes First coming in 2025. I've and on top of me wondering hey, to myself, they still make these. It seems to be like a remake of the first game in the franchise. And with that, onto the first lightning round of the partner portion. So here we go. Okay, Star Wars Hunters Season 3. Already forgot this game was out. Stalker Trilogy coming in November. Warren's Armageddon Anniversary coming 926, but that same day Zelda's coming out, so no one opinion on that. And a new Disney Dreamlight Valley event. I didn't see all the collabs that got in future in there, but I could tell that Encanto was also going to be very prominently featured as someone who loves that film. Um, and has only seen it go from strength to strength in the fandom. I definitely am glad to see it more presentation. I mean... Maybe we'll even see the Madrigals in Kingdom Hearts 4, who knows? Hmm. Okay, so while I'm not, not really that familiar with outright games, they seem to be trying to bring back the 2000s flavor of licensed game where everything seemed to get its own, but Patrick Star of the Game, a SpongeBob spinoff where it's a physics-based platformer, and many, many Easter eggs for I, everyone's favorite Sea Star. It might be fun. I'll have to see what happens when it comes out October 4th, which is also the same day that Joker Father is, which very different kind of pop culture there. So let's keep it going. I mean, Fitness Boxing 3, and I would, it's another one I guess, gotta say, okay, as it comes out on December 5th. I mean, it's definitely not really the game I really know what to do with. However, the next couple are very much a, a much easier decisions for me to talk about. Hmm. Okay, so Capcom Fighting Collection 2. As someone who loves the first collection. And I'm liking, again, the variety of not only a ma a different kinds of of games featured on there, unique versions, and and also acknowledging varying degrees of quality to go up. But for me at least, I say this collection, which comes out in 2025, three years since the previous one, it had me at the Power Stone duology. Yeah, I mean, 
maybe if enough people pick this one up and play it, we'll finally convince whoever's working there currently to maybe finally hey, make a third one. Hey, guy can dream, can he? Mm. And now it seems like the... Hey, finally let the proverbial old cat out of the bag. Hag, where... It seems that we now officially have a date for Marvel vs. Capcom collection, and for both digital and physical, it seems, where... And, like, the physical pre-orders have already sold out, out online, place I looked, for both this system and PS4. It's coming out, out November 22nd, which is already, to be fair, leaked by some other retailers. Before that, had this had, like, the usual placeholder date of... The 31st of the year, which is usually when they don't exactly have a confirmed date, typically, more often than not. There's a digital version coming September 12th as well. So, those who want to play it right away, I want to pursue that option. Me, however, I like something I can physically touch, hold, and feel, and also like a new comic book like that also has as the characters inside of it, which is definitely very perfect, and and with Marvel's Capcom 2 alone, I can definitely say you're going to be taking you for a ride once again. Okay, so 2025, Atelier Yumiya, as someone who has not played the other games in this franchise, I have nothing really that major to add, which is not the case for the next few games shown off here. Mm. Sweet Coden 1 and 2 HD coming March 6th of next year here and even as someone who has, has not claimed these are my favorite games on the, on the original PlayStation I definitely understand their appeal and I'm at least among the cult following that they have and and also I'm glad that they're still releasing in these titles in any format especially Given how the original PlayStation versions didn't do too well, also, again, that also means I can go for absurd prices on resale even before this whole retro game craze really caught on. So let's begin. Continue. Hmm. Okay, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Hey, coming November 14th. I still think it has potential. But I'm still curious how to perform now that Marvel vs. Capcom has a release date as well. I mean, Square Enix has something of a habit of putting out DQ titles at the same time as bigger releases, I mean... Whereas, there may be some of the national holidays in Japan when they launch unofficially, and even have an audience in Europe and the States. Never got more than a cult following at best, but not that it hasn't stopped them from trying. So let's continue. Out now is the Castlevania Dominus Collection, in which features three dual screen classics and an arcade grate in one package. It'll definitely go great with my collection. I have the advanced ones that. And with that, that just leaves two of my favorite installments, Holman's Back to Back, to release on the Switch. Symphony of Night, and Dracula X Rondo of Blood. Yeah, I know we got Dracula X on that other one I just mentioned, but I'm talking about the original one on PC Engine and the, the Dracula X Chronicles remake as well. I know it'll probably run it. I mean, the way things have been so far, I could basically run a toaster now. Hmm. Civilization Seven, the seventh main installment in Sid Meier's... Here's... Here's landmark strategy game franchise is coming February 11th next year with more new scenarios and historical figures to play with. It should definitely be a worth keeping an eye on. I just have one question. Will Gandhi still be obsessed with nukes in this game? I mean, I still love that in-joke that came from something as simple as, like, the dev screwing up the values when they were programming his, his character. <laughs> hey, So, Tales of Graces F coming out... out January 11th next year, just in time with their, their birthday. I may be prioritizing Donkey Kong Country, which he turns HD then. 
But since I never played the original game, I think this will be a great way to revisit this title and the many other Tales ones, so let's keep on keeping on. Alright. Nice Sims Retro re-release. Another one that's going to confirm the rumors that have been floating around a while. Hell, you know, where the first two titles in the Chibi-fied spell for the Sims franchise, My Sims, My Sims Kingdom, it's all together as one package. I think it definitely looks like it'll be cute, so let's keep going. Almost done. <sighs> Help on Planet 2 and Security Breach Story DLC coming this holiday season. I am still working on the, the main game on a different system. I gather I don't run to Grand Switch, so on to the second lightning round of this portion. So here we go. All right, so Epi Mickey brushed looks good. Tales of the Shire, still no formal thoughts on that one. Just since 2025, they still make these. Funko Fusion is an mmm, and Lego Horizon Adventure is a yay. I mean, Lego Alloy is definitely good with me, so only a couple more left, fellas. All right, so 2025, Rune Factory, Guardians of Azuma, I. I don't think I've played the other titles. I guess more of a Disgaea guy when it comes to unconventional strategy titles with distinctly Japanese flavoring. And while I'm on that subject, the last game featured here is definitely another proof that the console didn't hear any bell yet. Hmm. And further proving why those comments from you, Gagatoku's programs were made in jest is the reveal of Yakuza Kiwami, a full remake of the first landmark Yakuza title, finally coming to Switch, and if it does well, it could be the first of many games on the system. Um, um, and this whole crying drama on the streets of Kamarucho, oh, it causing him to uh, kill you, trying to reclaim his honor, and also avoid various side activities, my favorite, but still obviously still playing in classic Sega arcade titles at Sega Club, closely followed by finding Majima, uh, like a big, you know, where's Waldo. Anyway, that'll be all for now. It's all going to be soon, so take care, everyone. Mm.